alarming new data exposes just how badly our governments failed our kids and our vulnerable populations. But what's even more concerning is how the very people responsible for this disaster are gearing up to do it all over again for any number of reasons, from climate change to the next pandemic. And to all the kids out there, all of a sudden you've heard you can't go on play dates or have sleepovers. Your playgrounds and schools have closed and your March break was certainly different than what you'd hoped for. As the government sounds the alarm about the rise in COVID cases this fall and starts saber rattling for yet another lockdown, there's some information that needs to be front and center in every parent's mind. And it's not what the government is telling you. However, it is from the government's very own data. The 2023 Canadian Health Survey on Children and Youth is out, and it just revealed that mental health among our kids has taken a nosedive since the beginning of the pandemic. In 2019, only 12% of teens rated their mental health as fair or poor. Today, or at least in 2023, the most recent data, that number has more than doubled to 26%. One in four kids is now struggling, and girls have been hardest hit. One third of teenage girls say their mental health has seriously declined since the pandemic. This is no accident. It's a direct result of the lockdowns, school closures, overconsumption of social media, and all the isolation our kids were forced to endure. This isn't just about COVID cases anymore. The data is clear. The so-called solutions the government implemented during the pandemic caused more harm than they will ever admit. One-fifth of the youth who had previously rated their mental health as good, very good, or excellent in 2019 have since seen their mental health decline to fair or poor. And for teenage girls, the numbers are even worse. Among those who were doing well in 2019, 26% of girls now rate their mental health as fair or poor, compared to 17% of boys. These young women have been left behind And the best the government can do is tampons in the boys' room and boys playing their sports. School closures were a major part of this. Nearly half of the youth who once looked forward to school in 2019 no longer feel that way in 2023. And for girls, it's worse. 52% of them no longer feel any optimism about school. How can we expect kids to thrive when we've taken away the very structure and social interaction that school provided for many of them? It's clear that another lockdown would be disastrous for them. If you're slapping $880 tickets out to students like myself, they're going to have a really hard time seeing as if you don't work in an essential service and you're not able to get uh, benefits from the government, There's no real way for you to come up with the $880 on top of paying for tuition, on top of paying for uh, textbooks and just essential living. Like if you live on campus or something and you have to buy groceries every week and stuff like that, like that's really going to put a halt on your progress. You might even have to take the semester off. The Canadian Mental Health Association warned us back in 2020 when they reported that 40 percent of Canadians said their mental health had worsened during the pandemic and the number rose to 61 percent for the unemployed. And here's another chilling fact. Calls to crisis centers surged by 200% as people became desperate for help. These policies of the government created a mental health catastrophe, but instead of addressing it, they want us to forget that it ever happened or take credit for saving lives. But it's not just mental health that's taken a hit. The opioid crisis has exploded and the numbers are horrifying. In 2021, one in four deaths among Canada's young people was opioid related. Think about that for a second. While the government claims they were keeping us safe with their lockdowns, our youth were dying from opioid overdoses at an alarming rate. This isn't safety, this is a tragedy. And the government's policies are directly responsible. And the devastation, of course, it's not limited to our youth. A study examining data from the Ontario coroner's office revealed that opioid related deaths in Ontario shelters more than tripled during the pandemic compared to just a few years prior. These were people already on the margins, relying on shelters for safety and community support. But the pandemic restrictions cut off that support and many of these lives were lost as a result. So with all of this destruction left in the wake of the last lockdowns, the government has the nerve to start ramping up COVID fear again this fall. They're already sounding the alarm about COVID cases 
and parents should be understandably anxious. Consider the damage these policies have already done to our kids, to our communities, and to our most vulnerable. This information should be first and foremost in the minds of parents as we head into the fall. The government, again, wants you to panic about rising COVID cases, but you need to remember what their last round of emergency measures did to our children's mental health and to the people struggling in shelters across the country. Our kids are still recovering, if they ever recover, from the last time their schools were shut down and their lives were disrupted. We cannot tolerate any more of this. The government claims to care about public safety, but where is their accountability for the mental health disaster and opioid deaths that exploded under their watch? Our children, our youth, and our most vulnerable can't afford this sort of public safety from the government anymore. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreid. There's another crisis unfolding in our schools as we speak. It is the introduction of sexual ideology to innocent children at the hands of activist teachers. To fight back, please go to stopclassroomgrooming.com.